Hello, this is Kian Wormsley from the Autodesk Developer Network and I just wanted to talk you through uh, or demonstrate an application called TransTips which, which I've been writing and posting on my blog through the interface. So we start with um, looking at it inside AutoCAD and it was in AutoCAD that we did the original implementation. Um, so and it, it, it's, a, it's a simple application, it's essentially a, a .NET uh, plugin DLL that when it loads up it, it um, hooks into a shared component called AD Windows which is our um, ribbon bar which hosts among other things our ribbon bar and what it does is it waits for a particular tooltip or it, whenever a tooltip is being shown, not a particular tooltip tool but any tooltip it'll uh, essentially go out and translate that via the Bing translate service um, so the online translation service so let's start with um, just choosing a, la a language there are 35 destination languages to choose from we'll start with Bulgarian um, and when we select OK essentially what's going to happen is it's going to uh, get any tooltip that, that comes up um, and machine translate it um, via the, the the Bing service, and dem and, and replace the the contents of the standard tooltip with those of the translation service. So uh, this works relatively quickly. I mean, these are actually all being picked up from the web. I think uh, there is this capability of caching locally to XML. So if you have a fully populated set of XML files, you, you know you can you don't actually have to run it in online mode at all. It can work completely offline and then pull them in from. Um, XML and that also gives you the opportunity to edit those XML files and make sure that they're of a, of a you know an appropriate standard so let's um, change the language just so you can see that that works as well uh, why don't we go to Chinese um, and then when we click OK and this time of course we can see all the the, the same tooltips there um, in Chinese but what we can also do is go across to say the options dialog and take a look at the the tooltips here and here, this is also a very useful thing for people because clearly, um, you know, people do often want to understand the AutoCAD options um, and maybe don't have uh, a full understanding of, of, of what the items are. So, so that way they get translated there too. Um, and then if you want to, uh, to, well, actually what I'll show first, there's a couple of modes of operation. If we change um, CMD dial, which controls whether dialogues are shown for commands, if we change that to zero and, and use the trans tips command, um, what we can see is that we actually have that same list. And this list is generated each time the application runs. So if there's new languages, it'll support those as well. So here we can either select the language using the number nine, we want to change back to English, or zero to turn it off. Um, select none or we can also choose EN which is the language code and I've done it this way so that if you script it at runtime it'll automatically allow you to um, select your language rather than relying on the number it'll, it'll allow you to do it based on on the language code so here we've seen that we've turned the, the translations off and basically it'll reset the, the contents as they get requested <coughs> by by the AutoCAD application so that's the original application and that's the you know, seeing it working inside AutoCAD. The next step, and this, this was done with, with the help of Jeremy Tamik from, you know, the Building Coder blog. He, he essentially went, took the original application, and as it was working on um, using AD Windows, which is the shared component, which across many, many of our applications now, he was able, with very little effort, to get, it, to get the same application working inside Revit. So let's take, um, let's go start a brand new, uh, project and once we we have that we'll go across to the add-ins tab um, as a as a custom command it gets added um, by default under the external tools um, uh, item here so we'll go to translate tooltips we say this see the same dialog so it's exactly the same WPF dial dialog as the AutoCAD version you'll see a slight difference in that it has the Revit tool you know the Revit icon um, which just gets picked up automatically from the host application um, so let's have a look at some slightly sort of different let's start we'll start with Arabic um, so here what we've also done is go right to left so for Arabic and Hebrew which are displayed as right to left um, we've gone ahead and just changed a flip to switch inside the tooltip class which means that the text gets presented in that way which is nice I mean it, it sort of obviously aids readability 
um, for you know for for Arabic and, and Hebrew readers. Um, so that's that. That there. This is another interesting quirk. So if you look under, if you look at the tooltip for window, um, if when that when that comes up. So what we see here is that you'll see windows in plain text, and that happens for all, um, you know, for for all languages. And and there's a reason for that. And that's well. So there, there's two potential reasons, I guess you could say. We're using Bing Translate, so clearly. Microsoft has Windows as a product name and it has it reserved and won't translate it. But it is also possibly because using statistical machine translation, you actually train the engine with a set of content and, and they'll be using the the Microsoft user guides and documentation that has been translated into these 35 different languages. Um, so the fact that it the, the Windows comes up in plain text is also probably an indicator that in all that in all that content, Windows is um, always translated as uh, into English, which is pretty interesting. Um, now, of course, it just goes to show that one person's product name is another person's you know industry term. So while while well, well, for Windows, so for Microsoft, Windows is a product name. For us, it's very much um, you know part of our domain and our and our industry terminology. So it is it is a little gap there, but but a, an interesting quirk of machine translation, and certainly something that you can tidy up with XML editing. Uh, so that I think is probably well. Let's go just show another, uh, one more language, um, and here we can go across to anything. There's some really kind of interesting ones like Haitian Creole, which actually looks very very like French to me. Um, so there's a quirk in that it's still right to left, so that's something I have to, to iron out. It hasn't switched back to left to right, so that's something I need to I need to fix. Um, though maybe it's back. No, it's only for certain tooltips that have already been translated, so I can I can change that very easily. So that's Revit. Um, let's go across and the the nat latest edition, which is one I did over the weekend, which is to add Inventor um, to the to the f family of products that we're supporting with this with this. Uh, translate plugin. Um, so here, once again, it gets added automatically to the tools menu. So here we can go translate tooltips, same dialogue once again, um, and this time we can go to. Oh, there's a number of interesting ones here. We can go to Thai. Um, so let's launch a standard part, um, which brings up just a, a richer ribbon interface if you like so there's more stuff to 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 pick off here and here the 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 standard sort of items will be automatically translated into into Thai um so we can see that those are pulled up once again um if you want to go across it's always on the tools menu in this case we can select um go back to english or as well hebrew if you want to see another right to left language uh, let's uh, see that come up okay as you'd expect all right um, one last thing so let's uh, see I talked a little bit about this XML caching so I'll close inventor now and then we can go across to um, to the, the the caching folders. So inside the my documents folder, you'll see three folders, one for each of the products. So I've kept them separate for now. Um, but essentially, if you go into AutoCAD, then you can see that these are each relatively small XML files. Um, and for a particular for a particular string or particular command, if you like, it'll create this XML. And for every language that gets that gets um, that gets translated into, the content will appear in this. In this XML file, they didn't, we could do this a bit different. We could create XML files for each language, which might make it easier from a, you know, to, in terms of deploying um, a a particular language implementation for a, for a product. But but again, we're providing the source code for this. It's very straightforward for somebody to go and modify the, that that particular logic, um, especially if they're doing their own local language tooltip deployments. But you know, so one thing to you know what you. I do expect to see happen is that people will generate this cache by going through the various user user elements, then make use of either this direct you know editing directly in the XML 
or using the, some in-product editing capability that, that I hope to implement soon, which would allow you to, you know, hitting a, a particular key combination, bring up an editing dialog so that you could edit the XML in place and, and essentially approve a translation uh, rather than stick with the, the machine translation. And that would, you know, allow you to, to save these XML files and create this essentially uh, approved translation that, that, that it's then possible to, to deploy and share. So that is it for this demo. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you have any comments, please post them via the blog or YouTube or uh, send me an email. I'll be interested to hear from you. Thank you very much.